Welcome to The Crochet Room with Main Made Crochet. In today's episode, we will be learning how to increase, decrease, and make a slip stitch. All you will need is a weight four yarn and a four to 5.5 millimeter hook. Let's go. So we will be starting with a slip knot and then a chain of seven. We will be working a double crochet into the fourth stitch from the hook. If you need a slower demonstration or explanation on how to double crochet, make a chain, or a slip knot, just check out my previous episodes where I go more in depth on explaining them and much slower with showing you how to complete it. But basically, you're going to do a regular row of double crochet and you should have four double crochet when you're done. So that was just a regular row of double crochet. This next row, we are going to do an increase. So it starts off just as any double crochet row would with a chain three. So chain one, two, three, and turn your work. And we will be inserting an increase in every other stitch. So this is our first stitch here. We're going to insert a double crochet as normal. And then in the stitch right beside it over here, we're going to place two double crochets in the same stitch. So insert one double crochet. And then in the same stitch right here, you're going to insert another double crochet. And that is an increase. So in the next stitch, we're going to insert one double crochet. And then in the last stitch, we are going to insert two double crochet, which is once again, an increase. So the double crochet is right there. And we're going to go in and insert another double crochet right into that same exact stitch. Okay, perfect. So you inserted two increases and the row below had four stitches. So that means this row We'll now have six stitches in it. We can count that right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? And the row underneath right here had one, two, three, four. So that's what we mean by increasing. So that was an alternating increase. So first was a regular stitch, second was an increase, then regular stitch, then an increase. So you can also do increases in each stitch. And what that will do is give a ruffled effect and I'll show you that now so for your next row you always want to chain three and turn your work and now we are going to insert an increase in all six stitches so yarn over insert a double crochet and then that same stitch again you want to insert another double crochet and then you want to insert two double crochet in every stitch until you reach the end. And since we're adding two double crochet in each stitch, when you get to the end of the row, you should have 12 stitches in total. Okay, so here we are at the end of the row and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve stitches, so that should be great. Okay, we're going to add one more row and we're going to put three double crochet in each stitch now, just to show you what can happen or what your work looks like as you increase the amount of increases in your stitches. So we're going to yarn over, insert your hook, put a double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook, put a double crochet, and then again in that same stitch, put your third double crochet. Okay, and then we're going to add three into every single stitch until the end of the row. But this is also just for practice to add increases. There's no specific pattern we're following. So add as many increases as you want. This will teach you how to make frills and how your work will look if you increase. So you can use your discretion to basically learn how increases can benefit you while working on a project. You don't have to use three. I'm just using it as an example to show you what would happen if you insert three into your work. There's so many ways you can insert increases. It's always up to you and it will be trial and error. 
in some cases to get exactly what you're looking for. Okay, so we're here at the end of the row. I have 36, I'm not going to count them, but do you see this like frill type of motion? This is a very um, small swatch, so you won't see it that well, but it is frilled out here. And there's many projects where this would be a good thing. And there's other projects where this is terrible. Like if you wanted to make a skater skirt and you just wanted to make something like cute and flirty, or if you wanted to make a hat that had this little like dip design around the brim, that would also be great. Get creative. There's many reasons or ways you could use this. But if you're ever watching a tutorial or reading a pattern and someone says to insert an increase, this is what you will be doing. And they will give you guidance on how exactly you need to execute it. Okay, so I just unraveled my work up into the third row. This is the same swatch. And in the third row, we did an increase with two double crochets in every stitch. So now we're going to work on decreasing. So a decrease will start the same way. Chain three and turn your work. And this time we are going to decrease in every stitch. So I'm going to show two different ways that you can work a decrease. And the first one is by skipping the first chain. So this chain right here is the one you usually go into, but instead you'll go into this chain, the second one right over here. So you're going to yarn over, insert your hook, and make a double crochet. So what happens here is once you continue working up your work, this hole here that you can see will start to close up, but I'm not a fan of that hole there. So I typically don't use this method of decreasing. I'm going to show you what I typically do instead. So I will yarn over and start a double crochet in the stitch right beside it as normal. Yarn over, pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two and you'll have two loops on your hook. So here is where you stop. And then you want to yarn over again and start another double crochet in the stitch beside the one that's in completed over here. So you're going to insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and you'll have three loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over and pull through all three. So now we have two decreases and we said we were going to decrease in every stitch. So we're going to continue with the decrease that I just showed you. So we're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. You have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and start with your next double crochet in the stitch beside it. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. You have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two of them. You have three loops on your hook. And yarn over and pull through all three. So you can also see how these stitches are attached. And they look different at the top of the stitch rather than regular double crochet. So we're going to continue doing that. I'm going to explain it one more time. A decrease. So yarn over, insert your hook. Yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, two loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch beside it. Yarn over, pull up a loop, four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. And then you should have two more decreases to get you to the end of the row. And now just to do what we did with the increases, but just in reverse, we're going to go ahead and insert a decrease in every other stitch. So we're going to chain up three and turn our work. Then we're going to do that same decrease I showed you, the second one. So we're going to yarn over and go into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, go into the next stitch, Yarn over, pull up a loop. You'll have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. 
yarn over pull through two and then we're going to make just a regular double crochet and then we're going to make a decrease and then we are going to make a regular double crochet and that will leave us with four stitches which is what we started with so at the bottom we did an increase so the work got bigger and it went out like that and at the top we did decreases so it slowly starts to come together so that is how you increase and decrease okay and the final thing i want to show you today is how to do a slip stitch so a slip stitch is very very simple but it is also fundamental so we're going to chain one and we're going to fold this work in half and we are going to slip stitch these two ends together so we're going to make this work close on itself you're going to line up your two corners over here and fold your work you can line up any parts of your work right now if this is just for practice but i'm doing the two top corners and you're going to line them up like so so you have your chain one on your hook and your working yarn over here you're going to insert your hook at the top of the corner of the opposite side you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop and then you're also going to pull it through that chain one and now you'll notice that your work is attached together so you can also do a slip stitch alongside rows to continue stitching your items together so these two corners are still lined up and if i slip stitch all the way down here this hole will close so basically we're making a seam so insert your hook yarn over pull up a loop and pull it through all right we're gonna do that again you don't always have to specifically go into anywhere you just want to make sure you're making a nice secure seam so you're going to insert your hook again make sure that it goes in to part of the first section and part of the second section so it's going through the first section and now it's going to go through the second section and then you're going to yarn over and pull the loop through and pull it through the chain again we're going to insert our hook through both panels yarn over pull the loop through and we are going to continue doing that all the way down and then i'll basically show you that it's stitched together so once you get to the end of your slip stitch you can chain up one pull the yarn through and cut it I'm not going to cut it because I will be using this yarn later, but you can see that this is now completely closed off. Whereas here it's open. This is the other side. It's completely open. And in fact, you can't see through it because we stitched it together. But if you look at the other side, it's completely sewn together. So if you want to sew something together, a slip stitch is a great technique to use. And it's very simple, and that's how you do it. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you liked it, give me a like. If you didn't, let me know why down below. Make sure to tune into the next one. We will be learning how to switch colors. But that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.